So, we're on Frozen Temple once more for the second game of the tournament. Spawning to the top left-hand side in red is our Terran player playing for Euronics Gaming. And Austria, it's Sylvanus. And to the bottom right-hand corner in teal, playing Zerk for Horizon Academy and Russia, it's Suno Kazri has already sent out her first overlord in order to get some good scouting information. Sometimes I actually personally like to send this overlord not straight towards the opponent, but sometimes across that lane and then into the back, so I can just scout some proxy rexes over here. And then sometimes I even send my second overlord down here just to get some the other proxy location just as soon as possible. Sometimes I even leave an overlord over here just to be sure that the opponent won't be bunker rushing me or something. But yeah, I mean, sending across the both overlords can actually be quite greedy if your opponent really goes for some sort of proxy barracks cheese of any sort. Most of the time it's going to be reapers, but sometimes we will even be seeing... Um, some sort of just the traditional old marine bunker rush that's also pretty powerful if you do it the correct way and your opponent just doesn't know that it's coming. So Suno just has already taken a hatchery, is now just checking the back locations in order to see whether there is a bunker going down or not. So nice scouting by her, but still, like I said before, I mean, if there was a proxy cheese happening over here right now, then she would be pretty screwed. Especially since her overlords will still need some time in order to get over to her opponent's base. There's the first Reaper now on its way, so uh, this overlord should actually just see that a Reaper is coming. So Suno will probably just be kind of relieved seeing that it's only one Reaper that uh, at that point in time. But of course Sylvanas could have just built a few proxy hat, a few proxy Rexes over there and then just send one Reaper over here. Which is something you actually never really do. Because if you really go for some sort of Reaper cheese, you of course want to have all of the Reapers over at one part of the map as soon as possible. And then sometimes you actually have to say that the distances on Frozen Temple are actually that small that uh, you sometimes don't even have to do some sort of proxy reaper sh uh, shenanigans because um, just building a lot of barracks and a lot of reapers and then just sending them across the map can also work uh, without having to proxy anyways because like I said before the rush distances are very very short. So uh, Overlord now just getting into position in order to fly into the main base a little bit later and getting some information later on what the tech route of Sylvanas is going to be. So in the meantime we have the Reaper just trying to deal some damage here and there has actually just killed one unit over there which was just a Zergling so no real damage thus far has been dealt. Oh, Sylvanas has to be careful, is not really paying attention, just barely saves her um, just barely saves her Reaper over here, so still quite nicely done. But also Sunu Kazri's links now finally have some speed, and she's already produced a lot of them, and is even producing some more, with a Baneling Nest in the background, so it seems as if she really wants to get through. Seems as if Sunu Kazri has actually just, um, tried to analyze her opponent's play, knowing that Dilvanas actually goes for kind of greedy builds down at the main ramp, and it seems as if just Okay, I don't really know how Sylvanas actually got the idea what was going on. Okay, she had... No, this is just her... This is just her Reaper over there. Did the Reaper see anything? I don't really know. But I don't really know if it's going to be... Yeah, okay, she just realized what's going on. Maybe just because she's seen that there was no third phase early on. Okay, soon because we're just breaking through the first bunker effortlessly. And now even just taking out the rest of the unit. So it seems as if she might just not barely be able to get into the main base, of course. But you will definitely be able to just deny every mine at the natural base for quite some time here, which is already almost game-ending damage there. So just takes out another supply depot, just deals in as much damage as she possibly can, just plants back uh, or just puts back a few of these Zerglings, now even uh, morphing a few more Banelings right inside Sylvanas' vision. So it seems as if Suno Kazri is not really worried about what Sylvanas could be doing at all. She just wants to break through as nicely as possible. Just even plants some SCV down here on uh, auto repair, but of course these SCVs won't really be able to repair fastly enough if these units just break through one depot or even in the other one. Oh, unfortunately, even opening the pathway with a Reaper grenade there that was just a little bit too early thrown down, just elevating most of her own units so that the Lynx actually could break through right into the middle line of Sylvanas, just taking out the remaining units that actually mine something. Okay, Sylvanas just tries to fill the gap as uh, 
as quickly as possible. Now actually he has just managed to hold off everything. Can finally just send on a Liberator. I mean, Liberator alone won't really be helpful against more links streaming, uh, streaming in, but it seems... Oh, actually, it seems as if Zunokasri definitely wants to put on some more pressure before finally just getting into a different tech with the help of the Evolution Chamber here. Um, she's just sending in a few more links, but of course with the help of the Liberator, a few more Marines and the Siege Tank up on the high ground this situation has been cleared for now but like we said before i mean the losses were significant 20 SEVs plus three mules of course which just help out a little bit now getting the income up but in the meantime suno kazri has not been lazy she's already saturated her third base almost completely she's already saturated her second base totally and now is even getting the extractor the remaining um extractors on the other bases not uh yet getting the fifth and fourth um assimilator yet because she doesn't really need it right now she is already getting a good um income uh gas wise and mineral wise and they're finally after just saturating and producing a few more drones she will now finally just get up these gases as well going into the lair tech of course it's pretty delayed because of the aggression she just had to do early on in the meantime Zolvanas knows that she needs to deal significant damage throughout the next like two minutes i mean better would be like in the next one minute but yeah, Sylvanas needs to do something. She knows that she's far behind by now. She's not out of the game yet. She might be able to deal um, quite some significant damage with this Marine and tank push, especially with good micro and the Liberator in place as well. I mean, Suna doesn't really have that many queens out and she doesn't really have that much anti-air. She also doesn't have a Spire up yet. It's just in the making. So of course the Liberator will be annoying, especially uh, together with the Medivacs and the Siege Tank behind it. So if Sylvanas just manages to micro everything accordingly and gets a good fight at a good location she might be able to deal some damage i mean she's already dealing kind of some damage but but not really i mean she's forcing her opponent to just produce more and more zirklings right now and more and more army units by just threatening her opponent but i mean sudo kazri doesn't actually need to saturate her bases anymore because she's already she already has saturated everything so this push just doesn't really help Zylvanas at all i mean it seems as if she just tried to snuck by her units into the natural base but sudo kazri has seen it or saw it quite quite early on yeah the liberator's down but there's just too many units i mean even with the liberator in position uh she oh she actually didn't lose the the tank over here which is actually quite nice but yeah now the spore crawler will just uh, reburrow and uh, okay nicely actually nice nice then actually the siege tank will just try to take down that spore crawler over here but yeah the links just run in spore crawler is going to take out the liberator and with the liberator gone there's actually not much damage that sylvanas can do in the meantime we have a little drop down here that actually may be able to deal some more damage maybe even be able to take out that fourth base at least taking it down to less than uh, half health so still the biggest problem is yeah there was some damage dealt even five workers died but what are five workers if you behind about 30 it just doesn't matter Zulvanas doesn't even have a third base uh, up yet I mean she's produced it inside her main base but this overlord is even blocking the natural third base location I mean she could fly it back here to the fourth fortunately for her once she finally just uh, clears this overlord over here the creep will actually retreat pretty, pretty quickly because that was actually changed through um, Legacy of the Void uh, in Heart of the Swarm it actually took quite longer for creep to retreat so this was really annoying and that's why actually uh, some some zerg players actually like to get burrow as well and then just burrow another ling back here that was even something that people did throughout heart of the swarm where they just wanted um to keep the terran away f or actually every every other uh, every other um unit or every other race away from expanding too early on so nice little multi-prong drop here we'll see if it's going to work out i mean suno kazri has already spotted one has already spotted the second one and mutas are already out so it seems that the mutas actually just get one medivac that was very low on health sylvanas just tries to get out the widow mine but just doesn't burrow it maybe she didn't see it now just kills the one effortlessly the liberator won't even get in position because the spore crawler is still there but at least the other 
other drop just deals some damage right now, but the rest of the units are already in place. Seems as if Sudokasu will just move in, kill off everything. Nice mine hit here, but it just... Oh, actually only kill three kills, so not a really nice uh, hit there as well. And now the Medivac will die as well. 139 supplied to 64. It seems as if Sudo is just standing here, wondering while her opponent is not giving up at that moment in time because like like let's let's be real here i mean terran has a lot of comeback potential there are possibilities for sylvanas to get back into the game but this is almost an impossible task i mean suno is now even getting the ultralisk cavern will be able to transition into ultralisks without even being annoyed anymore probably because sylvanas just doesn't even have a standing force that's big enough to be honest i think if suno kazuri really wanted she could just walk in and kill off everything. I mean, this small amount of units plus one tank and one liberator? Ah, uh, that's nothing she wouldn't really be able to kill. But of course, she doesn't have the information that we have. And even if she had, I think Suna just wants to play it easily. Or wants to play it easy now. Uh, just produce a few more units. The Ultralisk Cabin will just pop up. She will be able to just produce a few Ultralisks right from the get-go if she wants to. Um, maybe she just wants to wait for the Ultralisk upgrade as well, but no, there they are, four Ultralisks already in the making. I mean, without the upgrades, they're not even as scary as they are with the upgrades, but it's still just going to be enough, yeah, and another drop just is going to be killed. I mean, she just unloads it here, there's one base, but even if she killed that base, it wouldn't really mean a thing. Uh, Zylvanas would have needed to just deal significant damage way earlier and way more. GG's out and Suno Kazuri takes the first game. Galactic Process is Zylvanas' chosen map and spawning to the bottom left hand corner in red. There she is playing for Euronics Gaming as Terran. Zylvanas! And to the top right-hand corner in Teal, playing for Horizon Academy and Russia, it's our Zerg player, Suno Kazri, who's just managed to take her first game fairly easily, fairly easily, <laughs> with the help of a quick Bane Bust. Like I said before, Suno is actually a very competitive player, and uh, she has told me again and again that she likes to prepare for these kinds of tournaments and games. Uh, she just has a look at what players usually tend to do and tries to adjust her game accordingly as far as she can. I mean, there are some styles she obviously hasn't practiced before. So uh, if even, even if she knew the direct counter and it would just involve a unit composition or a build she's never actually used, then she can, of course, still not try it. But little things like the thing I said before that Sylvanas actually tends to like to place her buildings to, to, to expand early on and then just expand down on the low ground as well. And uh, if she knows something like that, she likes to exploit these things by, um, like for instance, building early pools, building early bane links, and uh, then just bust your opponent's front. So th then it's actually, again, quite interesting that um, Sylvanas chose this map. Don't really know if Sylvanas is thinking about the same stuff that Suno Kazuri is doing, if she really tries to adjust to her opponents as well as Suno Kazuri does. But um, yeah, I mean, if she's watched a lot of the FSL League games, she should actually know that Suno Kazuri usually likes to overwhelm and overrun her opponents with Lings and Bane Lings on this map. And again, she just goes <laughs> for the command center down here. Um, not with the initial Reaper this time around, but going into earlier unit production with the help of the Reactor down here. So it should be a little bit easier to hold, but then again, this is like wide open space. I mean, have a look. We have a very large ramp into the natural base. We also have, theoretically spoken, the possibility that her opponent would just take down these destructible rocks over here or over here and thus opening another attack path into the natural base. So, and in the meantime, we already have Suno because we're just um, um, producing a few links out here. Okay, links mostly only there in order to drive away the Reaper. But of course, not getting any more information with a Reaper than the few information that uh, it already got. Hmm. Okay, we'll now use the Reaper stair over here in order to get into the main base. That's something a lot of people tend to forget that the Reapers still have this 
uh, other route they can actually move, move in. So Vilvanus not just tries to get the information, sees that the spawning pool is wiggling, sees no bailing nest though. I think she's actually not scouted every part. So a bit of risky from her side actually. I mean there could have been a bailing nest down here somewhere and I think she didn't even check the second, ga the second gas but I think she saw the third base being produced so that should actually just clear everything up. So Zelanas now knows that her opponent just won't pressure her that much early on it seems. So now she finally just goes for a bit odd I think of a wall off. So this is not a complete wall here. Don't know if it's really one depot that fits in here. Uh, like I said it seems a bit odd but I think Zelanas should have already played enough uh, games in order to know how she will be able to just um, wall this off or not. Okay, Link's actually getting nicely done by Suno here. Link's just getting one worker over here, keeping the bunker from being completed for just a few seconds there. Uh, while in the meantime, just taking a third base off her own. Sylvanas has not yet started trying to take a third base, so no early command center for here. It's not, not being too greedy after the first game, it seems. So, yeah, like I said, this was... Okay, actually, it seems as if this is just the only way in order to close this up. Is there no possibility to, like, put this bunker over here and then just close it with one more? Uh, with, like, one more depot? I don't really think that the wall would be weaker, right? I mean, if you have just banelings just bursting right in the middle here, it should just tear down all of the three buildings at once, right? So I don't really know if that is the best wall you can do on that map. But it's Zylvanas' chosen map. And like we said, uh, Zylvanas' chosen wall. And as we said before, um, the destructible rocks are also an opportunity. So even if you manage to wall off over here, there might still be a second way into your main base. And then actually a lot of Zergs also like to tear down these destructible rocks as well. So you will have two possibilities to actually get towards the third base. And once Lair is done, uh, Sunukasu will also have the possibility to just creep down everything and keep her opponent from expanding at that location. Thus far, it seems as if Zylvanas doesn't... Okay, she plans to, to get this base up in the long run, but like I said before, I mean, sooner because we should be able to just um, put this Overlord on Creep Puking before the attack actually arrives. And there we have it! For the first time, finally someone is doing what I was always only talking about, abusing this little cliff over here. Where you can just now put down your medivacs at that location and it will actually be able to fire at the actionary if enough vision is provided. And now you can actually just drop down these marines over here. And if you haven't cleaned this rocks, it will become tremendously difficult to clear this push. You will be very wasteful as usual. So it seems as if Sunokasu just doesn't even try to save it, because that would actually be the best thing to do. Like I said, it's so difficult now to take anything out. The Medivex could actually normally save siege tanks quite easily. Just put down a siege tank over here. You just have to keep the right amount of unit, or you just have to have your opponent miss microing like crazy as well. Well, okay, that would also work. So a little bit unfortunate here for Sylvanas just having one uh, medevac loaded up with units, so it just couldn't uh, load up the tank evac over there as well. So actually the push didn't really work out as well as Sylvanas could have done it, unfortunately, for her. Because like I said, I mean, there could have been z way more damage if she actually just have one tank down here, maybe one tank up here, and then a few, uh, and then a few marines here and here as well. It becomes tremendously difficult for Zerg to split up uh, her forces to just clear off everything because the opponent with quick enough micro can just load up this part over here and um, okay, just clearing the overload over here in order to get uh, the creep. Um, away from the third base location. Like I said, Creep is retreating pretty quickly in a Legacy of the Void. But yeah, like I said before, so it becomes pretty difficult. You can just always elevator the one tank that's being attacked and uh, you can just always keep the keep the Marines quite close and you will always have Marines down here and up here as well. So like I said, I mean, even if you don't lose the base, you just will lose a lot of units in the process and be incredibly wasteful with it if you haven't really cleared up that small attack path here. Because if you just miscalculated the amount of units that you actually need to clear to clear this you would just have to run around all of your units via that lane and it takes out so many uh, in the meantime your opponent can just easily take out the base plus a lot of um, your, your units as well but like I said it just needs good micro as well and um, actually it seems as if Zildanas 
has not really executed this push uh, all that often. So in the meantime, we have a few muters now finally moving in, but they are turrets in position. We also have a Liberator out already, uh, providing the air splash damage as well. And actually, it seems as if Sylvana's second push is still pretty, pretty uh, scary here. So, um, yeah, pretty scary here. So we have a lot of Medivacs and Tankivacs and uh, also a few Widow Mines. So uh, never mind, I mean, whatever. Sumo Kazui now is going to have, okay, nicely just te uh, uh, tearing apart these uh, units before they can actually cut in. Quite wastefully, a nice splits there by Zylvana is just uh, tearing away everything here and all maybe, oh, everything, um, bleh, don't actually know what I'm talking about. So Sumo Kazui just loses all of her army, just sends in her links way too far, uh, and her banelings just way too far off creep. And uh, the links just arrive at first, get shredded down by most of the marines before the banelings actually finally arrive. And I think this should just snowball quite easily. I mean, Sunokazu is just sending in links after links. There's a lot of them left because Sunokazu has been macroing quite well for quite some time. But just links alone don't cut it. Especially not against Stim Bio with a reinforcement or with the help of Medivax here. And the reinforcements just uh, coming down. Uh, across the map, so now even the Liberator in position. Um, Sylvanas has easily taken out the fourth base attempt of Suno Kazuri here. Yeah, Suno Kazuri will still be able to take a fourth base over here if she wants, but in the meantime, she first of all just needs to clear that push. And like I said before, with only links and the same upgrades on both sides, this just won't be enough. So Suno Kazuri has to give up, and Sylvanas ties the series one to one. Back on Frost for the third game of the series, spawning to the bottom right hand side in red is our Terran player Zylvanas, who's just managed to tie the series one to one. And to the bottom left hand side in Teal, playing for Horizon Academy, it's Suno Kazri, who started off the series with a nice little Ling Baneling bust and spiraled everything from there but uh, last time around it just didn't work the way she wanted it to go starting with a full-out macro game whereas Lilvanas just did one big push with most of her army and then everything went downhill from there so hatchery always uh, already done we have the SCV just Scouting will probably just find her opponent at the last scouting position. A bit unfortunate here for Sylvanas, of course. As a Terran, you normally want to know where your opponent is as soon as possible, especially before you have the possibility to throw out your first Reaper. But of course, it's not really that tragic. So first Reaper is probably going getting rallied towards the horizontal spawn location. In the meantime, we have, again, an early, quite an early spawning pool with Extractor. So it seems as if Suno Kazui just wants to go back to the strategy she used in the first game. Uh, we'll probably try to tear down Zylvanas' natural base. Just playing on her typical weakness. I mean, Zylvanas just does it again and again. The wall is still open. The command center is being built on the low ground. We have a wide open entrance that we would have to wall off and of course early speedlings can just kill this pretty easily especially in combination with banelings so there's the speed in the making with the next 50 gas i think we're going to see a baneling nest i don't think that it's only going to be links so zolanas is probably going to spot this so right now she's just killing off a few more units who hasn't actually seen the rest of the base yet but sees that there's that there are quite a lot of early links i mean this can be important and can mean something it could just be a typical four links you just want to have in order to fend off that reaper or maybe just get better scouting off i mean mitsukotsa actually likes to produce four early lings as well so that uh, she will have the possibility 
for instance, to get the watchtowers. And she even sees the third base, so I don't really know. It seems as if Sunakasri actually just doesn't want to commit. She will have speed available very early on, but no baneling nest. So maybe she just wants to run in with a certain amount of units. She would, of course, be able to do so. We'll now lose one of these overlords here. Nice micro there while Sylvanas just making sure that these two marines will actually get down this overlord over here. So nicely done by her. Um, third base for Sunokazuri. So it seems as if Sunu just wants to give a macro game another chance. Doesn't really want to throw in everything. But yeah, like I said, I mean, just imagine. Just imagine 20 speedlings now just running in and no wall. I mean, what would you be doing? What would you be doing? I mean, like, if you got lucky, you would even maybe get into the main base because because the supply depot is even down. I mean, the marines were just retreating backwards, and if you're just occupied um, microing those marines, maybe you don't have the time to get the supply depot up. And then imagine 20 lings just streaming in here, killing off everything, while the only thing you have are like four or five marines. So like I said, I mean, she's really vulnerable to those kinds of styles and Suno seems to try to do the same thing once more just trying to get in with most links I mean the wall is still open even oh my god this could just be this could just be devastating to her okay she just runs in sees that their wall is not finished yet this SCV is probably going to finish the wall once it's done no, another SCV? Where are the links? Oh, the links are just too far away. Okay, just waiting for the few Bane links in order to come in. So she will just definitely be able to bust through with most of the links. I don't know, maybe one Bane link dies, two Bane links die? But the wall is broken. And again, Suno just streams in with most of the links. Kills off a lot of units, but fortunately for Sylvanas, the Marines were standing in a nice little ball down here just surrounded by most of the SUVs but again just all everything in the natural is dying Suno just again just morphing all of the bailings in order to break through the supply depot once more this time around there's at least one widow mine here but even losing the mules is just such a bad move over here whoa Zolanas has to be careful just gets in the marines and uh, puts up the supply depot once more wants to strengthen her own wall on the left hand side uh, with throwing down uh, by throwing down a bunker over here more and more links are just arriving. The only thing that Suno has to be careful about is just thinking of the mine, just sending one unit or maybe two just up in order to um, make this water mine hit, but it's already done. So now the Banelings can come in, just crush through everything. It's only mostly Marines, but one Widow Mine hit! Good Widow Mine hit! Actually, only the Traitor Mine just killing off most of the units, and Suno Kazri does it again. GG, and Suno advances to the winner brackets final.